water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four tribes lived in harmony, but all that changed when the dual avatar, master of zero elements, invented a fifth one. Feet. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Jesus, you're gonna hate this one, I'm sorry. Today's deck is Dual Avatar, and if I'm being honest with you, it only does one thing. Makes two fusions with one conditional quick effect. It's too consistent to brick, has no malleable lines, and therefore every game is the exact same debilitating loss. If you like, you can turn the video off now. But, if you're made of stronger stuff, if you're willing to entertain the possibility that a janky FTK might just be workable in a relevant capacity, and most importantly, if you'll sit through a bit of Eldritch gameplay, I might have found something worth doing with these monsters. Presenting Dual Avatar. But first, a word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is the Dragon Link of mobile gaming. Just like Dragon Link, it's a top performer. Check out any list on the App Store and bam, there it is. Just like Dragon Link, it's endlessly customizable with over 500 champions to collect. And just like Dragon Link, I seem to beat it. God! We played a little bit of Raid Shadow Legends on a previous stream and had a blast. War Boy. Are we playing War Boy? All right, let's let's give War Boy everything under the sun. All right, listen, I'm War Boy one trick. All right, War Boy. Yes. Only War Boy can defeat the Fire King. Here's how my team looks right now. By summoning and then sacrificing unused or weak champions in the tavern, I can increase the power of Karam and Warpriest, who I have to admit are currently carrying my party. And while my sad devotion to Warboy is jeopardizing my success immensely, Warboy cannot ascend! I will go down with this ship. There's tons to do, including a robust campaign, dungeon boss battles, and clan membership. <laughs> That's right, we have a clan! Just search PLSS Gang for the latest on clan bosses, weekly rewards, and steamy Warboy fanfic. Like MBT Industries, Raid is also constantly innovating. They just released the Artifact Forge, where you can craft artifacts directly, a whole new advanced quest system with Poggers rewards, a slew of champions, and the secretive and exciting Doom Tower. Go to the links in my description box, and if you're a new player, you can get 200,000 silver and a free champion, Grinner. I mean, listen, he's no war boy, but he's still pretty cool. You'll find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. So here's the list, and that's right, that is the law of the normal. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. With that, let's dip into Dual Avatar. Dual Avatar is an archetype two main deck monsters deep that feels like it was designed by an AI. It's got every hallmark of lazy card design, the field spell that searches the main deck monster, the main deck monster that searches the play starter on summon, etc, etc, etc. Their payoffs, fists and... feet are a targeted attack position destroyer and a single-use targeted extra deck monster negate. I know! With effects that powerful, it only makes sense that they're also conditional. They've also got Kongao, which has conditional targeted spell and trap negation, and Compulse. Honestly, I'm almost put to sleep by how linear and underwhelming the playstyle is. The strategies telegraphed, the win cons are laughable, and there's literally no adaptability. However, I think I might have found something funnier to do with the archetype. Their signature spell, Dual Avatar Invitation, summons five tokens before locking you out of anything but fusions until the end of the turn. If you decline to fusion summon as per its effect, you've actually fulfilled the condition of Law of the Normal, which sends the entire field and hand of both players to the graveyard. By pairing the archetype with Eldlich, we can continue to play long after everything we own is sent to the grave, and ideally, we can kind of FTK our opponent in the process. If we eat a hand trap, that's fine, at that point we're just playing Lich with two slightly sticky purple bunguses. In a perfect world, this will function like Trickstar did when it was Droll and Looping, a decent deck with a 30% chance to win the game on the spot, turn 1. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, three of our big golden friend, followed by three Yuhi, who searches a spell. After that are the spells, three Law of the Normal, three Perfect Sync, three Invitation, and three Fusion Redeployment, which summons Yuhi. We're also on three Extravagance, an Upstart, a Terraforming, a Rota, and our Eldritch spells, a White Destiny, and three Cursed Eldland. For traps, we're on three Infip, three Sanguine, three Conk, and three Hawk. In the extra, we're on an Extravagance board of the other big golden boy, Fists, Feet, Unicorn, and Phoenix. So with that, let's jump into the games. 
Our first match is up against a Dinosaur. That's right, we are jumping in the deep end immediately. Now at this point in time I was still playing Left Arm Offering. Don't do this! In order to resolve Law of the Normal, you have to have cards in your hand to send to the graveyard. In short, Left Arming for it does literally nothing. No big deal, we still have everything we need in this opener. We're going to test for hand traps with Ayun, and there's Droll and Lockbird. No big deal, let's fire off this copy of Invitation next, summoning five tokens to our side of the field, and then activate the graveyard effect of Scarlet Sanguine so we can get an Eldritch into rotation at our end step. We will now activate the Law of the Normal, sending our opponent's entire hand to the graveyard, and at end step resolving the effect of Conquistador in order to fetch a Scarlet Sanguine from deck. We'll pass it back to our opponent, who draws Pancratops, a very powerful one of, just not in this particular situation. We'll fire off the Scarlet and get an Eldritch to our side of the field, then draw for turn a Conquistador. We'll go for the Scarlet Sanguine getting a Haketo, which kind of telegraphs this play, but eh, no big deal. We're already so far ahead. Our opponent for turn draws a Miscellaneousaurus. They're going to lead with a copy of Pancratops, then activate its effect. We'll activate Haketo. I'm expecting another pill, so I banish the only non-dinosaur, only to be met with Miscellaneousaurus, and a follow-up Soul Leading Overraptor. They'll activate Overraptor's effect to get a Baby Sarasaurus, but without another dinosaur to cycle, it accomplishes literally nothing. We should be able to win from this position. We'll activate the Graveyard Effect of Eldritch and bring it back to our side of the field, getting over the Baby Sarasaurus, not triggering its effect, and dealing 3,000 damage to our opponent. We'll activate Haketo at end step for another copy of Scarlet Sanguine. Our opponent will draw a Lost World and concede. So that's what happens when you open Law of the Normal, but what about when you have to play nice? Our second match is up against Zodiac, or as it's recently been known, Zeus Turbo. Let's see what we can get accomplished. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, banishing six cards from our extra before firing off a Terraforming and finding a Perfect Sync. We'll activate Perfect Sync and then get ourselves a copy of Yuhi, who will Normal Summon, and activate his effect targeting himself, only to be met with a Veiler. Fine, fine. Well, we already have the invitation, so we can go ahead and activate that now, summoning four tokens to our side of the field. From here, we can make not only the big golden boy, but also feet only to walk face first into a Nibiru. Okay, we'll activate the effect of Feet targeting our own monster because it's funny and get a big old token. We'll activate the effect of Cursed Eldland to get an Eldritch and thankfully because our opponent now has a monster we can activate Eldritch's effect to destroy it and its second effect to bring it to our side of the field activating Cursed Eldland afterwards to send a Conquistador. We'll set one card, activate Conquistador and we lost the token? Invitations end phase restriction doesn't specify what type of token? Are you kidding me? Our opponent's going to go to Dryden and try to destroy our indestructible monster. <laughs> Read in the future, idiot! They'll equip two copies of Whiptail, only for us to infip their monster and... Oh right, there's a Ram Ram under that. Well, okay, I guess we both aren't very good at reading. They'll banish my monster, and suddenly we are facing down a very, very powerful double-A Zeus. They'll activate its effect, we'll chain Scarlet Sanguine so we get an Eldritch into rotation before everything we control is sent to the graveyard. For turn, we draw a copy of Invitation without a card in hand that's going to be pretty hard to trigger. We're going to go ahead and set a copy of Conquistador and activate Eldritch's effect, summoning it to our side of the field. We'll proceed to the battle phase, which prompts another double-A Zeus, at which point we'll pass back to our opponent. The name of the game is Not Dying Here, and we should be able to. It's got no material. They draw a copy of Nibiru, they'll proceed to the battle phase and get in for 3,000, and then pass back turn. We are extremely lucky they are not drawing zoos. We'll bring back a copy of Eldritch and then draw the Law of the Normal right on time. We'll fire off an invitation. This should be enough to destroy the Negalogia. We'll then summon a copy of Fists and activate its effect, destroying this copy of Negalogia, only to be met with not only a Veiler, but also a Nibiru, and because we activated invitation, we're going to lose the big token as well. Okay, we'll activate Eldritch's effect so we can walk over the rock, if nothing else, and put our opponent in top deck mode. <sighs> at end step, we can activate the effect of Conquistador to get a White Destiny, which I believe is our last remaining Eldixir. Oh, they draw a zoo off the top. What a miserable hit. They're going to go all the way into Borbo, which is able to attack directly, and despite the fact that I have a monster on my side of the field, enable a double Azeus. They'll pass back to us, and boy, that's got a lot of material. We draw a Yuhi, we'll normal summon a Yuhi, and activate its effect targeting itself so we can get a copy of Invitation. We'll proceed to the battle phase and walk into this copy of Negalogia, only to activate Eldritch's effect and its second effect to pop it in our hand. We're going to have to not get killed here, but that shouldn't be too difficult. We've got a Heketo to protect ourselves. We'll pass back to our opponents in any top deck, but... Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Okay, thankfully they bricked post Avarice, so we still might be able to do it. For turn, we draw another copy of Law of the Normal. Can't get enough of these. We'll send it to the graveyard to bring back Eldritch and proceed to the battle phase doing 35 and 18. God, I am so close. I can taste it. We'll go into a Phoenix, so at end step we can trigger the effect of Haketo to get our last copy of Scarlet Sanguine. We're going to pass back to our opponent who draws a tanky for turn. God dang it. They're going to get a copy of Rat. They'll activate Rat's effect. Afterwards, they'll overlay for, unfortunately, Chocanine and Borbo and Dryadent and activate Dryadent's effect, destroying our last remaining monster attacking for 100, and in main phase 2 making the big boy once again. I have had to deal with so many double Azeuses, 
Okay, we can activate Eldritch's effect here, and then its second effect in order to destroy the on-field double Azeus, but from here it's going to be a difficult time winning, unless we activate the Scarlet Sanguine Graveyard to get a copy of Haketo. God, we are so close. Anything here, and as our opponent T-sets, I realize we might actually have it. We'll set this copy of Left Arm Offering, boy, it's coming in handy, to bring back Eldritch, attack over their known hand trap, and get in with Hakero for lethal. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Dragon Link, and oh, we open Law of the Normal again. Well, okay. We're going to leave with a copy of Perfect Sync Ayun, we'll activate its effect, and then Normal Summon a copy of Yuhi. We'll activate Perfect Sync's second effect to get a token, and then Yuhi targeting himself, which pretty much telegraphs what we're up to, but there's not much our opponent can do about it anyway. We'll summon as many tokens to our side of the field as possible, four in this case, before firing off a fiendish upstart goblin, only to fiend into Cursed Eldland. That's going to get us an Eldritch before we fire off the Law of the Normal, which means we'll not only be able to activate the effect of Cursed Eldland in Graveyard, we can Scarlet Sanguine for disruption on our opponent's turn. At end step, we'll trigger the effect of Conquistador, getting ourselves a Scarlet Sanguine, and pass it back. Anything but a starter with... Oh my god. Okay, well, we can activate Scarlet Sanguine, and then we can activate Conquistador. It's not pretty, but we can't allow them to make Striker Dragon with Tracer in the graveyard. They'll pass back to us, and we have to assemble lethal. This has to be lethal, right? Like, it can't not be lethal. We'll activate the graveyard effect of Eldritch, summon Eldritch, activate reinforcement of the army, get our third copy of Yuhi, normal summon it, switch everything to attack position, and it's 500 plus 18 plus... Oh my god. Oh my god, the upstart is preventing us from winning the game. Okay, well, we can go into Phoenix, so at end step we can trigger both the effect of Conquistador and Hakero. As long as our opponent doesn't draw insane, we still should be able to win anything but a starter, and we've got it. Oh, thank goodness. All right, they pass back to us, and from here it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to the battle phase. So it's time for game two, and while a hand that includes Cyphering Gear Driver and Red Eyes Wyvern doesn't look particularly frightening, they did draw the Black Metal Dragon. They're going to Normal Summon that, and Link Summon a Striker Dragon, triggering not only its effect, but the effect of the Striker Dragon in sequence as well. They'll add a Boot Sector Launch and a DMD to hand, which they will summon. They'll activate DMD to summon a copy of Seyfert from hand, pitching a Wyvern to go into Wyver Burster. They'll activate Romulus's effect to get a copy of Dragoonity Divine Lance, which they will then activate, and activate its on-field effect to equip a Phalanx, which they will then summon. From here, we're just going to make Link Cross, activate Link Cross's effect, summoning two tokens, and have you seen this combo before? They'll activate Marcher's effect, bringing back this copy of Phalanx. Afterwards, they'll go into a Crystron Halk of Fibrax, summoning from deck Red Rose Dragon. Okay, they're going to use that to get a copy of White Rose, which will turn into a Striker and an Elpy. Oh, whatever floats your boat. We'll use Elpy to get a copy of Brotar and use Brotar's effect, pitching a driver. Oh, while Herald is on field, what if you draw a copy of Gamma? They're going to go into Pisty and bring back this Striker so they can make a Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres, summon the Wyvern Burster, make a Union Carrier, summon a Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, make an Appaloosa for three before activating Boot Sector Launch, summoning a Rocket Tracer and activating its effect to summon a Silver Rocket from deck, ending on a board of Borolod Savage Dragon for two, Buster Lock, 3-Mat Appaloosa, and Herald. Woof. Okay, so we've lost. We'll lead with a copy of Rhoda. We've got a Yuhi. We don't activate the effect of Perfect Synced because I do want to actually resolve deployment. We'll activate it now to summon a token to our side of the field and Yuhi's effect, which fiends a Herald. Okay, well, we can normal summon another Yuhi and activate Invitation, but without access to our extra deck, that's not gonna do anything. We can walk over the Union Carrier, but all that does is trigger Brotar. They're able to activate the effect of Brotar, targeting their own copy of Borload, so they can get a Chaos Dragon Levener for next turn. They don't even give us access to Scarlet Sanguine, so we will go ahead and concede. So it's time for that all-important Game 3, and oh god, we're going first! Our opponent's hand is terrible, but we didn't draw anything unfair. I guess we're going to have to put our faith in the fusions. We'll lead with the terraforming and then activate perfect sync. We're going to use it to get a Yuhi to hand. We'll activate an upstart goblin, and thank god we found the Eldritch half of our deck. We'll go for perfect sync's on field effect and then activate Yuhi's effect so we can get another copy of Invitation. We'll activate one of the two Invitations, pitching this Conquistador so we can summon four tokens to our side of the field, go for the big golden boy, and feet! That's an extra deck negate and nothing else for those of you counting at home. We're going to get a copy of Scarlet Sanguine and pass back to our opponent, who for turn draws a Chaos Space. Three games in a row, this Black Metal Dragon. They're going to go from Black Metal Dragon into a Striker Dragon to get a copy of DMD to hand and a copy of Boot Sector Launch as well. They'll go for DMD and then bring back this copy of Black Metal Dragon, which they'll use to go into Romulus. I figure now is as good a time as any to fire off this extra deck negate, and their hand is looking kind of scuffed. 
They'll fire off a one for one to summon the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword from hand before activating the effect of Link Cross for one, enabling a summon of Hauka Fibrax. That's going to turn into a Phalanx, and here comes the Martial Metal Marcher, but it's much less powerful when all it's doing is summoning back the Phalanx. They'll activate Chaos Space, and they have a Wyver Burster, but it's not that big of a deal. From here, they can go into LP and get a Black Dragon Collapse Serpent to hand. They'll summon the Black Dragon Collapse Serpent to activate the Graveyard Effect of Chaos Space. Ooh, for a World Legacy Gar Dragon, and then Brotar into a copy of Tracer. It'll trigger the effect of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent and go into a Bora load, but I I still don't think we're dead here. They'll make a Protector Whelp and activate Boot Sector Launch so they can summon this copy of Rocket Tracer. They'll fire off the World Legacy Guard Dragon, and unfortunately I think now is when I have to fire off the Scarlet Sanguine so it isn't negated. Next they'll go into an Appaloosa and activate Tracer's Effect, targeting their World Legacy Guard Dragon for a Silver Rocket, enabling a Bora load Savage Dragon, but we still have our extra, and it looks like we will still have life points after this turn. We might actually be able to do it. Okay, they're going to switch their monster to defense position and get in for 3,000, but that's not the end of the game. For turn we draw Haketo, that's all right. We'll activate Eldritch's effect and keep it in hand so we can activate its effect again, pitching these extra cards just to get these copies of the Appaloosa Negate off the field. We're going to activate Perfect Sync Ayun and then try to activate Yuhi's effect. It just gets Appaloosa as well. I'm trying to walk over the Appaloosa, but the... Oral Sword switching it to defense is going to prevent me from doing so. We can activate the effect of Scarlet Sanguine and attempt to proceed to battle phase, of course, which will be met with a Boral Sword Dragon. No big deal, we do have access to an Eldlich, provided our opponent messes up. This one remaining Borolo negate is killing me. They proceed to the battle phase, we'll activate Scarlet Sanguine, and they are able to negate it. God, we're just one piece of extension or interaction away from winning this game. We'll go for a Conquistador, they walk into it, and unfortunately, we're taking lethal from Boral Sword. So we're back with the deck, and yeah, cheesy decks will occasionally take single games, but it's pretty unlikely they're going to sweep a set. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, obviously, Law of the Normal is insane. What's more, there's not a ton of mechanisms for hand traps to stop it. You've got to be really heads up to sniff out the line, and the deck is so full of searchers, it's nearly impossible anyway. Two, the actual dual avatar line isn't the worst, provided it's followed up with negation and interaction in the form of cards like Eldlich. An additional compulse is... still better than not having a compulse. And three, they have a card called Feet. Come on. And the cons. One... The archetype just is not good. I know I'll get a thousand comments explaining that by playing more of the archetype I would have seen more success, but seriously, read the spells and traps I'm not playing and tell me they deserve a slot. Two, occasionally you resolve Law of the Normal and then lose. It turns out a ton of decks have a better time playing from the graveyard than you do. And three, even if Law of the Normal is a fun, spicy way to change up gameplay, you're still mostly performing the same linear process every game. It gets old fast. All in all, the archetype is uninspired, unfun, and from a competitive standpoint, unplayable. Maybe that'll change as we get more dual avatars, or maybe Konami will cut their losses. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, Alex Perea, Candyman, Chibi Gohan, Crispy, Dim Sum Zero Five, Frosty, James Oaks, King Magic Ruler, Lavender Lemonade, Mike Carlotti, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Sir Tachyon, Space Dandy 1993, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Emil Elefondi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Furuya, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bed, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Black and D, Chad Bortz, Chess Prime, Tropes Away, CG Alex, Control for the Wind, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Dylan Conley, Dive Missile, Donnie Fillerup, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gavin Charlikowski, Gil Gabless, Intercrest, Isaac Jackson, Jaden Nya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jose Luis Cortez, Juliet Chulian, Corey Hess, Kurokaze, Lawrence Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Mac the Moderate, Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskvar, Muno Arashi, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Picnic Blast, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Sapphic Ashley, Seeker, Sean Dial, Second, Shine 55, Standards Objective, Swinkles, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, and Yuki A. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.